The Species Act is designed to ensure that species that are in decline for any reason are protected and recovered back to a self-sustaining population. There are four species of fish that are listed under the Endangered Species Act as endangered and therefore have to be recovered or protected. Through the recovery program, water users and the state are working together to provide fish flows, flows that the uh, federal scientists have indicated are necessary to encourage spawning, uh, ensure recovery for the endangered fish and the habitat the endangered fish require. Water rights designated for recreation in kayak parks are called Recreational Channel Diversions, or RICDs. The beauty of having this recreational in-channel diversion is that it maintains a place and time for our recreational users. At the same time, it allows water to go downstream undepleted for other users in Colorado. In addition to recreational in-channel diversions, Colorado water administrators will have to oversee challenges to the traditional prior appropriation law, including the conversion of water use from agriculture to urban growth. I have found that when I started in 1978, my biggest responsibility was administering water to irrigators. As time has passed, we have gone from an irrigation society mainly now we're beginning to get a lot of development that's coming in and drying the lands up, putting houses on those lands. And I can't say whether that's good or bad, that's just a fact. A lot of our properties, ag properties, have been changed into developments and uh, as a consequence um, we're finding ourselves in a whole different ball game. We have a constitution in Colorado that can be changed with, with just a majority vote. I have a real fear if people in the cities get short of water, there will be a ballot initiative to change our existing water law. Even though we consider our prior appropriations doctrine to be sacred in this state, uh, those of us with senior water rights would, would be very unwilling to see that those laws changed. Uh, the majority still rules and the majority could vote to change those laws which would, would leave our water rights in jeopardy. There is another big water right, so to speak, and that's the, from the Colorado River Compact Call involving the seven states. The Compact Call is a legal obligation to share water between the upper river basin states of Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and parts of New Mexico, and the lower basin states, including southern New Mexico, Nevada, California, and Arizona. The compact call would require upper basin states to curtail Colorado water use in order to meet lower basin water demands. There's a big concern if we take too much water out of the Colorado River, whether it's for use on the western slope for, for energy use or for agriculture, municipal, we could face a compact call under that uh, Colorado River compact because we're not meeting the water needs for the lower basin states that we're required to under the compact. According to the laws we have now, the junior water rights would be the ones that lose first. Since most of the junior water rights are held by municipalities, there's a question how long the people living in the cities that have all the votes will, will put up with that scenario and what they're going to do to try to get water from agriculture to, to meet their needs, because they certainly outnumber us. So there are some, some very real concerns with, with whether there'll be changes in the laws or, or what would happen to agriculture if we do have a compact call. If a river compact call comes along, I can only tell you from my perspective that 